Welcome to 10 Minute History. In this video, we are going to try and cram 49 years of history into just a 10 minute period to give you the basic information about a person who many know as one of the most famous and probably most influential rulers of the ancient world. We're going to be looking at the man known as Emperor Qin Shi Huang. This video will cover three basic questions. Who were they? What did they do? And why were they so important? We've only got 10 minutes, so let's get started. Some basic facts about the first emperor of China. His name literally translates to first emperor of Qin. For those that are having trouble remembering how to pronounce it, think about the chin on our faces and you've got it pretty close. So, Qin was born in 259 BCE, or before Common Era, with the name Zheng. His father was the king of the Qin state, and after his death, Qin became the king of Qin at just 13 years old. This was in a time in China's history known as the Warring States period, which actually ran from 475 BCE to 221 BCE. During this time, China was not really one country, but was rather seen as lots of different states, all controlled by different rulers and lords. Each state had its own rules, laws, sometimes even writing, and currency. There were constant battles between the states, where lands would be conquered or taken over by the more powerful state and army. More on this later though. At age 38, Qin became emperor of a unified China, or all of those states, and he ruled until his death in 210 BCE, so just a few short years. However, his work in this time was massive. We'll explore this soon. How did Qin die? Well, apparently he was obsessed with immortality or living forever. He had alchemists, an ancient form of a chemist meets scientist meets sorcerer, work to find him a potion that would help him live forever. Unfortunately, Qin supposedly died from poisoning, most likely from drinking those potions made with toxic materials like the metal mercury. So let's look at how Qin became the first emperor. In the year 230 BCE, just seven major states remained from the Warring States period. It was at this time that Qin led his armies and powers on a mission to conquer all other states. Over time, he took full control of each state, sometimes occupying them for some time before fully conquering where some control is still in the hands of the state. This took just nine years, and by 221 BCE, Qin had become Qin Shi Huangdi, or first emperor of China. His power was now much greater than ever, and he could now start to rule the whole land. The Qin dynasty had officially begun. So what did Emperor Qin do during his reign? His great power is both celebrated and feared. He was known as an achiever of great accomplishments that still impact China today. However, he was also known as a ruthless and at times cruel leader who would stop at nothing to rule the way that he wanted. Famous Chinese historic, um, historian Sima Qian wrote about Qin about a hundred years after his death and captured this celebration and fear by saying, with his puffed out chest like a hawk and voice of a jackal, Qin is a man of scant mercy who has the heart of a wolf. 
So what were some of Emperor Qin's awesome achievements? Well, first of all, he unified all of China's states, really becoming the first to rule the one country of China. One of the ways in which he did this was by being a legalist. This meant he implemented a strong system of government in each district to control the army, the laws, and monitor the people living there. This meant each person living in China was under the same system of government and law, making it more equal, even if those laws and punishments were harsh. Secondly, he implemented standardization, which is the process of making things the same. This was in lots of areas, including currency or money and writing. Qin implemented new coins called Ban Liang, which could be used across all of China. He standardized measurements and weights by having consistent scoops and cups made to use all across the land. He even standardized the width of axles on chariots to make it easier for people to travel across different parts of China. China's writing system was also standardized, making it a rule that only certain characters could be used. Thirdly, Qin was known for his construction. Probably most famously, the Great Wall of China was seen as being largely due to Qin. Whilst protective walls already existed in China, so each state could protect themselves against each other or other invaders from areas such as Mongolia, Qin worked to connect these walls to protect all of China, as well as build new walls to ensure his empire was safe. He was also known to build many roads and canals throughout the land, making travel much easier. So why is Qin often called a ruthless ruler? Well, Qin was known to execute or kill almost anyone that opposed or disagreed with him. This included many noblemen and scholars or educated people. In 212 BCE, Qin ordered the killing of 460 Confucian scholars or people educated in the teachings and philosophies of leader Confucius by burying them alive. Qin was also fiercely protective of his own reputation and status as the ruler of all. He restricted many ideas throughout the land. Many said it was because he wanted history to start with him, meaning many of the rulers and famous people that led or influenced China before were banned. He ordered his forces to collect up and burn books and records of many, including Confucian texts. Those that refused to hand over their books and records were often killed or tortured. Finally, Qin used those he didn't like or opposed him as slave labour to help him with his achievements. This included the incarceration or keeping prisoners as slaves to work on the construction of the Great Wall. Many thousands of slaves died constructing the wall, with Historians finding evidence that men who died whilst building the wall were simply mixed in with the materials and put inside the wall itself rather than being buried. He was also known to make slaves and mark them as his property by castrating them or cutting off of their testicles. This was a punishment that was considered worse than death at the time. So how does Emperor Qin live on in today's world? Well, one of his most amazing achievements we can still actually visit today. Emperor Qin's mausoleum, or tomb where he is buried, is located in Xi'an, a city in China. It was discovered in 1974 by a farmer and his family when they were digging a well for water. We know from records that over 700,000 workers built the tomb and filled it with thousands of treasures. This included precious materials, jewels and stones, art, pottery, and other things. 
The tomb was apparently so grand that it also had rivers of the metal mercury, thought to be a material that gave you everlasting life flowing through it. Most famously, however, are the terracotta warriors that were found in the tomb. Over 8,000 statues were found in the tomb complex, all handmade and painted, all with different facial features, hairstyles and weapons. There were also archers, horses and chariots found. It is believed that this terracotta army was created and placed in the tomb to protect Emperor Qin and to serve as his army in the afterlife or life after death. Much of this tomb has not yet been excavated or opened up, so we are still not really sure what other treasures might be inside. So there you have it. A very quick history of Emperor Qin Shi Huang, a man who achieved great things that still influence the country of China today, but a powerful and perhaps cruel ruler who would stop at nothing to make sure he was seen as the best. Which is he more of? That is for you to decide. Thank you for watching 10 Minute Histories, and we hope you have learnt lots about Emperor Qin Shi Huang.